Hello, it's Sarah, and this video I'm going to be base coating, and I just wanted you to see the way I do it. So I'm going to get out some Cape Cod Blue. This is a little pattern that I got um, at the DecoArt website. I like to base coat with flat brushes, so here is about a number 10. Well, actually it's a 14. Anyway, when you base coat, you want a little bit of, paint, of water mixed into the paint. So I go into my water bucket, blot on a paper towel, and then I pull some paint out of that puddle and kind of make a mix of the water that's on the brush and the paint right next to that puddle. And this is how I load my brush to base coat. I do both sides, and I have lots of wet paint now on the brush. His jacket is blue. So I'm going to put the paint down in the middle ish and just keep going back and forth working my way to the edge because by the time I get there I don't have too much paint on my brush that it's going to make too many ridges. So when I learned to paint we wanted the uh, we'd rather have two thin coats of paint than one thick gloppy coat and so I'm planning on putting a second coat on here. As I go, I keep over stroking the ridges. And I'm just going to... This whole thing is his jacket. I added a little more water to my brush because I'm running out of paint. And I'm just going to go back into that puddle and mix water and paint together. And come back to my piece. Put it down in the middle, like I said and work my way to the edge. I use a lot of paint when I base coat. Um, this is just considered kind of like the prep work before you get to the good stuff if you're if you love floating the way I do. I'm using the edge of my brush to make that nice straight line and then I'm coming over to the sleeve so now I have accomplished a pretty nice thin coat of paint and I have a fan on. It is 75 degrees today guys in, in New Jersey. Um, for, for November you can't beat that. I didn't put my brush in water that time but it's okay. I put a little arm on here. This pattern is by Chris Hoy. She's um, Cupboard Distributing, C.D. Wood. I took a class. I, saw, I found her on Facebook, and I am loving her designs. And I happened to see, again, Facebook prompted me to the Deco Art webpage. And they had free tutorials there. So I've printed out a few of them. And I decided to share them with you guys so that you can... You don't even have to pay anything, and you can get these great designs for yourself. I cut this wood out on our Glowforge. We have a, a Glowforge, but I would have just used a bandsaw in my basement, too. Like, I'm not scared to do that. <laughs> um, or if you have a handy guy around who likes to do woodworking, you could ask him to cut it for you, because, you know, they love to do that kind of stuff. So I'm just going right over that's the inside of his sleeve but when I shade it it'll, uh, I'll get the dimension. And I'm almost done this jacket. So you just keep moving. Acrylic paint dries fairly quickly and because I've added water to it and it's a little bit of a thinner coat it'll dry pretty quick. But while it's drying, it's a little birdie there, um, I will rinse my brush and base coat another section. So that's it. That's the key to base coating is you keep it moving. So the other, I'm going to use AC Flesh for his little hat. It's not a hat. It's his face, the little burlap. Um, I don't know what you would put. I guess it's like a burlap sack that they use to make the scarecrow's face. And I'm going to use a trick 
later on. I don't know if I'll show you this, but this is Tracy Morrell. She used uh, spackle tape or drywall tape to create this little checker pattern on there to give you the illusion of um, burlap. Chris has a different technique, but I might use, I don't know, I'm going to have to read it and see what she has me do, and I'll decide. Again, a little bit of water mixed with paint, and I go right to the center of the head and put it down. Just get all the paint put down, and then I work my way to the edge of the of the head and just gently pull my brush I'm keeping the, the camera zoomed out a little bit because um, I come out of the shot and I don't feel like this is something that you need to see super close up. Now hold on, I'm getting a little too crazy. Just want to be careful along these edges. Again, I have plenty of paint on my brush. I'm putting it, when I push down, I, I create these little puddles of paint. So I am, I constantly move my brush and pick up the paint that I put down. So here, right here, um, hopefully I don't come out of the shot. Right here, I use the chisel edge of my flat brush. I turn my piece, guys. That is my favorite part about working on a piece like this. I can move it. Sometimes when you're working on a, a like a stool or a chair or something, it's harder to get. Don't forget about your Q-tips as well. I always have Q-tips available because I just actually, I stick it in my mouth and I get a little bit of moisture on there and I take away anything I don't like. And that is a coat, one coat. I know I can still see through, so I'm going to be able to do another coat on there. <coughs> While that's drying, I move to, I think, the camel. She has, the hat is going to be camel. Some of my paints are so old, but I'm just happy I'm using them up. Same brush, I'm just rinsing it. Getting a little bit of water in the brush, loading it the same way, pulling from the puddle and creating a little bit wetter puddle right here. So it's not straight paint, it's paint and water right here. So it's slicker and it'll move across the piece much nicer. And I just, again, put it in the middle and then I work toward the edge. I am a pretty fast painter as well, you guys, so take your time. Whoops, my brush turned. Um, be in the moment. Focus, it is very meditative for me. I, this is where I started in my crafty journey and it has always been my serenity. I don't think I'm in the shot. I have to come up. I warned ya. Um, because of this very thing, the way it keeps you focused and all that matters is this paintbrush right now. It's such a good feeling. These are teachable skills, you guys. I have, I have just had a lot of practice. And the more you do it, the better you get. It, it's also um, just paint. It's not the end of the world. So, you know, it's better than not trying. You should try it. And you'll see that you can do it if you try. You'll never know if you don't try. Um, but I love to create. Oops, I just went... 
right here so I'm just going to push away um, I loaded my brush again but I did not pick up water so this is much thicker and you'll notice it, I'm, I have to go to water because it won't move as well the paint is kind of just staying there I need it to move I love all these little dips and dabs that Chris does to make it come to life. I have too much water on my brush, so I just blotted it. I want to, I have to focus on stuff my hand on that side and the wet part. But see, I went on the head a little bit right here. Just pull it away and stick the edge of my brush up against. I think the face could take two to three coats. But the hat will probably take two. The jacket will take two. And once you're done your base coating, that's where the fun really starts because it will start to come to life. I have one little section here. I'm just again pulling all those ridges off and I just have to get in right here. I use the chisel edge of my brush to get in there. A lot of people like to float with a, uh, I'm sorry not float, base coat with a filbert brush which has a rounded top to it. Um, some people use rounds. I use rounds when I'm in a smaller area for sure. But this is a nice big area. Um, I need to base coat my bird with black and then his little, um, this is a piece of wood that's coming out for his arm. But the blue is dry so I'm going to go back and do another coat of blue and show you how the second coat, two thin coats is much better. So you can still see through this. So I have water in my brush. I'm going to pull a little slicker wetter puddle right next to this puddle. And this color is Cape Cod. It's a, a ceram coat color. So pretty. I didn't have the color she wanted, but this is one of my go-to blues. Especially for like a country blue like this. Put it down in the middle. Just get that on there. I'm going to reload. Again, make my way towards the edges. Still feels a little dry. Like I said, I do have a fan on. So it could be drying a little quicker. I'm going to go into water. Reload. And now I'm going to come closer to my edges. My lighting is a little shaky for painting. I, I wish it was a little more direct onto the piece. You can see I'm casting shadows. Um, we have like track lighting above me. And I mean, I'm sure it's uh, better than some, you know, some lighting would be, but it, in this case, I do get shadows. I just noticed that. So that's up to the edge. Oops, I don't want to stick my finger in paint. Right here I need to come right up against this edge. And that's a second coat. I don't know that I'm going to need to go three coats on this. So I have a little bit of water grabbing what's left of the paint on my, bra on my palette. And I'm just going to put it right in the middle of the sleeve all the paint and then I kind of just keep see look there's a huge puddle right here of paint so I can go get that in a minute and then I'm going to take this and go right down this side um, 
I just wasn't ready to paint Christmas yet. I'm not ready for snow. I'm not ready for cold. It's 75 degrees. It's so gorgeous. The leaves haven't even all fallen. They're still beautiful. The colors, they're not even brown. Now, I have a ridge of paint. Let me show you this. I have a big ridge right here. I need to get rid of it. Um, I'm going to try and pull it away by doing that. I don't like to leave ridges. That's just a pet peeve of mine. Um, and I am a pretty smooth floater, a uh, smooth painter, so. Chris is not. You know, Chris, this specific artist that designed this little piece, she definitely has a different style painting than me. I took a class, a free class with her. I think that's it. I think I've covered the whole thing. And you can tell it's definitely covered. I don't think I'm going to need another coat on that. Yeah, it looks great. So let's see what about this one. Um, but Chris is... Uh, I, I want to say she probably started in oils. I don't know for sure, but her uh, style of painting is way different than mine. Okay, this is the face color. Again, I'm loading my brush the same way, creating that little slicker wetter puddle right next to it. I put it down in the center and work my way to the edges. And I move so fast. So just know that I've been doing this a long time and so I just tend to move fast. You do not have to move as fast as me. But I am a fast painter and I did leave a ridge again right along this edge which I'm not thrilled about. It's because my brush, I have so much paint on my brush. Oops, and I'm sticking my hand in the blue. It's already drying though guys. It's it's like tacky. It's not even wet. It's tacky. Kiwi, why do you need... I have my bird on my shoulder and sometimes I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt. She'll slide down a little like my shirt slides down and it reveals my strap, my bra strap. She just needs to pick... You're driving me nuts like she's picking at it. But if I don't have her with me, all we'll hear is peep, 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 till I go get her. Usually I don't even remember she's there. She's so light. I, she's a tiny little bird, but um, when she does that, I notice kind of got it on my blue, which that's okay. And then... Just use that chisel edge of your brush to go right up against the line, the edge of your um, drawing. I'm going to have to do a little bit more. I can see some of the stenciling, so when that dries, I'll do one more coat. Let me, Kiwi, stop. I just pulled my sleeve back up like my collar of my shirt was falling down. Anyway, I'm going to grab some of this hat color. Put it right in the middle. And I'm going to work my way back to this because I, oops, I picked up a little paint booger. A couple of little paint boogers got in there. I told you my the paint is so old. Sometimes there are little clumps and bumps. Ugh, did I? Nope, I did a good job. Okay. I just filmed the background to this piece. It was so, oops, fun. Um, I just decided to break it up into the actual steps that I take when I paint. So background, base coating, um, I don't know that I'm going to do the floating because, 
Oopsie. I don't, I don't know that I'm going to do the whole piece on camera. Sometimes I don't want to put the camera on because I can just be in the moment and not worry about filming, you know? And get up and walk away from it as I see fit. Um, that being said, I don't mind filming either. So I think if you're willing to watch it, I, I mean, I should be willing to film it. That's all I'm saying. It doesn't hurt me to, I just had those little boogers there, a little dry. Um, it doesn't hurt me one bit. I'm going to be doing it regardless. So, um, but this is basically just to show you, there's just another, uh, in real time, the process, and I don't know how long this video is so far, but I like that I'm breaking it down into steps that are little chunks that you can kind of watch as you go um, instead of like a whole thing. So then once you're done the base coating, you know you can go to the next video or, you know. So that was my thought anyway. Um, and like I said, I am not ready for, I have a couple of things I want to do for Christmas specifically, but um, even snowy things or I want to paint an angel. I've had, I've never done it. It's a, a Maxine Thomas piece and it's big. It's a decent size and I think I'm going to do that on camera. Um, you know, I don't know if she would mind and the pattern is not for free. So see, that makes it harder for you guys and I think it's from a book. So I'll have to figure it out. Now, when I'm done base coating, I'm going to show you what I do, but I erase all those tracing lines. I'm not going to do another coat of the blue. The blue is absolutely done. Nice, solid color. I'm going to have to do another coat. I think I'm going to do another coat on both of those. My little um, crow, I probably won't have to do a second coat because that's black. And I don't know what color the arm is. But I'll be right back and show you how to erase all your lines. All right, all based in. I just took my doggies for a walk. It's beautiful out. But I wanted to share the last step before you move on with uh, the fun stuff, the really fun stuff that I love, which is floating and all that. You need to erase your tracing lines or transfer lines. I think I could do another coat on the, ah, we'll see. The zinc doesn't seem solid. Um, so we no longer need these tracing, oops, let me end workout. Um, sorry, I just like to get those steps in. This is something that Chris actually recommended as well. Chris Hoy, the woman who designed this piece. It's the Tombow Mono Zero Elastomer Eraser. Now I feel like it's probably very similar to, um, hold on, these guys that I use. This is the Pentel Click Eraser. This is my old one. Um, and I use these quite a bit, just as an eraser. This somehow, though, is even better. I also have the High Polymer Eraser by Pentel. This is when I'm doing um, my mandalas. When I do a lot of pencil work, I use this. And then this is a new one I just got. This is also by Tombow, and it's called a Sand Eraser. You can get paint off with this. It's, it's actually a little bit more st strong, but just for right now I'm going to use this one and it works like one of those pencils. You kind of feed it down and I'm going to come down so you can see this pencil mark. Now it's not pencil, it's graphite paper. It's the tracing paper. Uh, this stuff right here that I used to transfer the pattern on, but it's basically graphite. So like a pencil. So you just kind of gently come in and sometimes it would smudge with this one, but eventually you get off all the line 
unless I've painted over it, it, it should come off. So what if you see it not moving, that means I must have painted over it. And in that case, it's okay. So anywhere I just see dark, just gently go over it. And I'm assuming there's going to be shading around this hat eventually anyway. It's just that they were really looking, like right here, another really strong. I'm just dulling it down at least. I'm going to just use this uh, plastic one for a second, see if that comes off. Or whatever, that tracing paper that I used tends to be tougher to get off. I'm not sure what it is. I think I got it at my um, Hobby Lobby. And there you go. I didn't really... Uh, just let me take this sand eraser and see if I can... I don't want to damage the painting because I did such a good job of base coating. I think we're ready to go. So I will be back with another video as I move along in the process. But that's basically, that's base coating. So I'm all base coated and ready for the next step. That's it guys. Thanks for watching.